Canadians make anime. I had to say that to make this video somehow related to anime. Warframe is one of my favorite games and I want an excuse to talk about it. I used to play this game like a couple hours a day, but I get on once per week at most. I'm going to talk about some of the builds I use specifically in terms of female characters for it to be related to the title of the video. I'm mostly going to be talking about each character's gameplay and a little bit about them as characters and their appearance or whatever. So at least the title is at least somewhat related. And I'm gonna, you know, talk about how good they are as wife material or how breedable they are or whatever degenerate shit like that. The title is waifu frame, but I hate that term. I'd rather say, oh, would I goon to this character or are they breedable? That's somehow less cringe than the term waifu for me, even though I'm an anime fan. Almost all of these builds are from somewhere on the internet, whether it be a YouTube video or over frame. They might have modifications, but generally I don't really know where they came from, so I apologize for that. Also, I don't really care if my builds are like super optimized. They work well enough for me. I've never been to level cap in anything other than circuit, so I have no idea if these actually work at level cap, and I highly doubt they do, so keep that in mind. <laughs> also, don't expect great fashion frame, quote unquote. I prefer simpler style. And plus it's hard to figure out whether or not something works. The previews in this game aren't that great. If there was a way to preview the full outfit with armor with matching colors and all, that'd be good, but th that's not in this game yet. I hope they add it in. If I don't talk about a character, I don't play them. If I don't talk about your character, it is nothing against them. So first let's go with Titania. Regular Titania used to be my most played frame. I used to do a lot of Plains of Eidolon bounties to farm Aya. That's before I knew that relic packs could give Aya. My syndicates weren't fully leveled, so that wasn't really an option at that point. I know that there's builds with Null Star or whatever. I'm like too lazy to figure that out. And those are good for like relic missions, right? And plus, everyone else is going to be using something optimized for killing stuff in a uh, public relic mission, so it doesn't even matter. Anyway, here's the build. It's just a lot of strength, efficiency, so you can be in the fairy mode for longer. All the other shit doesn't matter. More pistol damage, energy. I don't really use the, the melee weapon, so here's the pistol. Just put as much damage there as you want. A great use for Titania is for I-10 treasure hunts. She just trivializes all the puzzles, gauntlets, or whatever. Yeah, I used to use Titania a lot because it, the pistols in early game basically one-shot everything, so it was like, oh cool, this could be a really good damage dealer, but then I got to Steel Path and it didn't work so well. So I have other builds that I will show for that. Yeah, traversing levels is so fast with Titania. Other missions that Titania are good for are high missions or capture. It's just about flying from point to point and uh, doing the objective really fast. You have to do some amount of single target damage, and Titanium's pretty good with that, with how strong these pistols are. Alright, for, <laughs> for the Gooner stuff, alright. If you like small women, you know, that's cool. If you like, you know, fairies. If you want to do a gender swap of that B-movie fanfic, where uh, Barry flies into the lady's pussy. Alright, let's get the contentious character out of the way here. People shit on Yoreli a lot. She's actually pretty good in a lot of scenarios. She's not gonna be good in every scenario, but she's actually pretty useful in quite a few. Yeah, one of the things is that people hate the skateboard. The problem is, you can't use Marilina Guardian with loyal Marilina. Marilina Guardian is important because when you get kills on enemies affected by sea snares, it heals Marilina and you get fire rate on your secondary weapon. Both of those are really good. It's like, sure, loyal Marilina, you don't have to ride it, but you can't heal it. And the problem is, with loyal Marilina, it's much harder to see when Marilina dies. And once it dies, especially in Steel Path, you're sitting duck, you're gonna die very fast. When you're riding Marilina, it's pretty obvious when it dies, right? You just jump off it. While this one, you might not be looking at it dies, right? Plus I don't play this game with a lot of volume. <laughs> so if it does make a noise, I don't actually know if it dies. You'd have to be watching the bottom left of your screen a lot to make sure that you have the damage reduction buff that Marilina gives you. So yeah, that's why I prefer 
riding Marilina rather than using uh, Marilina Guardian. I really like using the Compressa with Yoreli because uh, Aqua Blades has a really cool synergy with it. I'll show you it later. Also because it does so much status that you can put Corrosive on with two green Archon shards. You basically armor strip instantly. That kills really fast even in Steel Path. Yeah, sure, their Compressa doesn't take advantage of uh, Yoreli's passive of getting more crit chance when you're moving. The fire rate from Marilina Guardian, it kills stuff so fast, even in Steel Path. Yeah, see, see how fast that guy got armor strip? You, you could shoot Aqua Blades into the bubbles that the Compressa makes, and it makes this, like, slash bubble. And then when you combine it with this, and just shoot more Aqua Blades at them, you do a lot of slash, and it, that also kills pretty fast. Since this build is made for armor strip, this is pretty good against Grenier, the Murmur. This character has a lot of survival as well. Since Marilina gives you 90% damage resistance, plus adaptation, it just gives a lot of resistance. This character is basically, like, death by a thousand cuts except all the little cuts are like all at once so you're basically killing stuff really fast <laughs> oh shit yeah that's the main issue with Yoreli it's kind of hard to move around with Marilena but the thing is don't sprint and don't jump that's mostly it like if you see a gap just get off Marilena I don't think I'm actually doing a good job of <laughs> showcasing right now but whatever yeah if you see a jump fucking get off you get a little bit of invincibility so you're not gonna die very fast. Like, people say, oh, the movement is so bad, but getting off the skateboard is such an easy thing to do, right? Like, it only costs 25 energy to get back on the skateboard. You better have fucking fully leveled energized from the events. Though even, like, level 1 or 2 should be fine, honestly, to get your energy needs. Plus, I have preparation, which helps at the start of a mission. This is actually the worst room, why am I here? <laughs> yeah, people complain about how hard it is to move with the, the skateboard, but don't think of it as a movement option. The main benefit of the skateboard is to use it as a deployable shield. Don't use the skateboard for movement, use it because it's good for survivability. I need to kill this uh, guy over here. Yeah, this character has a lot of jank. There have been times where, like, I couldn't use my secondary, which is very important with this character. Janky stuff with interacting with items like keys and... I could be wrong here, but I think you used to be able to uh, revive people while on Marilina, which was really nice to have, but I think they changed that. Yeah, there were glitches where you literally can do anything, like you can shoot your gun, you can use your abilities, and that was very crippling. But I haven't had those issues, they might have fixed it, I have no idea. Another thing that bothers me is that people call Yoreli the R34 frame. I don't know why. She's just, I don't know, cute. Like, look at that. She's just hugging the skateboard, her, her pet fish. Like, people think she's hot. It's like, okay. I think she's just cute. I mean, sure, she has the fucking weird-ass, weird alien skin with the big booty. But yeah, people were seeing that before the skin was even out. I really don't like the automatic assumption that if you're referring to something as cute, you think it's hot. More sense when you're talking about a person that you might be attracted to. But I don't think that always should be the case. Like, I, I call puppies cute. I don't want to fuck puppies. All right, I'm not a furry. Yeah, I just think she's cute, you know, doing little dances. So I don't really like that. Idea of uh, gooning to her, you know. <laughs> Next up is Protea. This was one of my first Steel Path viable frames, like right when I got to Steel Path, and for pretty good reason. The cannons do more damage as they do more hits, so having a lot of duration is really important. Having a load of strength isn't as important with uh, Protea, though it does help. Equilibrium makes it so that you have infinite energy with Dispensary. Archon Vitality is really good for more damage with uh, the cannons here. Temporal Erosion for the armor stripping while you use Temporal Anchor. For some reason, I, it doesn't work on specific bosses. Like, for the Komei event, I couldn't use it on the boss for some reason. I don't know if that's bugged or not. Alright, here's a demonstration. I know it's not Steel Path, but you'll probably get the gist anyway. Holding down the grenade fan gives you a lot of uh, shields, which is really nice. You're pretty mobile with this character. Since the cannons don't really last that long, you could put one down and you don't need to stay by it to get a lot of kills. The cannons do a lot of damage to both armored and flesh enemies, so you could use her basically wherever. 
I have rolling guard on, so you know if there's poison in in an infested mission, I could avoid that using rolling guard. Poison's still really annoying to deal with, despite that though. Just generally, even though this character is mobile, I still prefer using this character in uh, defense-oriented missions like mobile defense or you know regular defense interception. Party is really good for low-level interception because the grenade fans do quite a bit of damage to lower-level enemies, so you could solo interceptions on on lower level stuff like non-steel path and you could cover all four points by yourself using grenade fans which is really helpful if you can't connect to other players or you know have friends on to help you with uh those low level interception missions another cool thing is that that the grenade fans actually heal excavation targets. Not a lot, a little bit, but you know, that could be useful to help save it in clutch situations or just healing it in general. Also pretty good for hijack since, again, very mobile, strong options with the cannon. Let's talk about how the character looks, so. I don't really like the normal skin that much for Protea. I don't like the belly dancer look or whatever she has. I don't know, it just seems off. Why would that be her character or her visual style? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Also, I don't think it looks very good. I've always liked this outfit a lot more because I kind of like the vibe of llama milker that this one has. It makes more sense for her to be like martial artist from the mountains who, who fucking milks llamas or whatever, but you know, can defend the village if she feels like it or needs to using her fucking uh, space magic or whatever. I know it just fits the theme of the game a lot more. It's like what she fucking strip dances for corpus dudes. <laughs> That's so weird. While you know chucking grenades and, and going back in time and shit. That doesn't really fit the belly dancer thing but mysterious mountain lady it fits a lot more. Weapons don't really matter that much because the cannons are strong even in Steel Path. I'm just using Burst and Prime because, you know, it's a good weapon. I'm using a fucking side on, alright? I barely use this thing on Protea because everything else is so strong that it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't really care if I'm not showing the Steel Path. I'm sure a lot of people just know how Protea plays. I'm sure you could get that Steel Path footage from somewhere else. <laughs> Alright, I'm doing my fucking weekly grind while I'm uh, making this video, so uh, yeah. Alright, next character. Now we have Geyer. Geyer is the most mind-numbing frame that I play. Like, I could play Revenant or like Dante and go on easy mode, but Geyer is also pretty boring to play. But she's also so useful that I end up playing her a lot anyway. So for the build, Cathode Current is basically required for Geyer. So you, you basically, you get abilities 3 and 4 infinitely if you get a lot of kills. So, oh, you shock everything within a fucking 50 meter radius with extra crit damage infinitely as long as you get kills. The build I saw loads of strength. There's so much strength. Even in Steel Path without armor stripping, you kill Grenier and armor and enemies really fast. Plus, with Roar, you do even more damage. Almost double damage with how much ability strength I have. I've Roar subsumed over Coil Horizon because Coil Horizon is actually the worst grouping move in the game. You can't even control where it lands, which makes it such a pain to use. So i rather just have the more strength from Roar rather than the grouping. Plus, you do damage in a giant radius anyway, so why would you need to group enemies, right? Also, also, I have the non-fully leveled blind range because I leveled this thing when I had barely any endo. Now I have shit tons. Of I'm keeping it like this because it actually works pretty well because with Xeneric Lens, you get a free ability basically at the start of every mission. So you use that on Rotor Swell and then with Archon Stretch, you get enough energy that you get Cathode Grace faster because if you have a fully leveled blind range, you would have to wait longer to get enough energy with the cathode grace, if that makes sense. <laughs> You know, I'll just I'll just demonstrate it here. Yeah, Geyer is good for like basically every mode except for like spy missions and, and hive, you know, and hijack. Well, even hijack is pretty good because uh, the the rotor swell hits so much stuff. Yeah, so you use your free ability on rotor swell and then you use cathode grace 
a fully leveled Blind Rage, it would have taken longer to get Cathode Grace. It turns out it's pretty good that uh, the non-fully Blind Rage is uh, very useful to have. More, which does even more damage. Yeah, these Steel Path enemies are just getting vaporized. This frame is so easy to play, right? You just press th 4 and then you press 3 and then everything dies, right? Which is very useful and is very applicable since, you know, killing enemies is very important in this game, right? Since there's so many that spawn. I basically min-max the game by playing Gyre because she's so fucking easy to play. And it was lame because like, eh, I don't, I, I don't want to use my brain when I play this game, so I'm just gonna pick Gyre. You know, there's no variety there. This character is also good for relic cracking because, you know, killing stuff to get void traces is very useful. But like, I don't want to play Gyre even more, so I just use Lavas and let everyone else kill stuff. That's how bored I was playing this fucking character, that I'd rather just play suboptimally to get more enjoyment out of the game. And plus, Lavos is uh, fun to play, but I'm not going to be talking about him. I don't want to goon to him. Also, it doesn't help that she doesn't look very cool. Like, she has, like, this ballerina thing going on, but her proportions are weird. She has, like, weird, like, clicking thing. I don't know what it is. You would have seen it earlier. Rotor small active, she upskirts you, but she doesn't even have, a, have like a thick ass or like a, a gaping pussy to look at while she's upskirting you, so it's not even hot, dude. Maybe she's just not cool to look at because you can't see anything because there's a billion fucking damage numbers on the screen from how much damage you're doing anyway. Alright, what's next? Korra's like the go-to farming frame for a lot of people, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this build. My one friend gave me this build, basically. Because of accumulating book plot, you don't need any strength, so you just put it in range. The whip scales so much with this that you don't need any strength. And then pilfering strangle dome for even more loot. You know, standard melee stuff since the whip stats are related to your weapon stats, so Nermon lens for, for longer combo duration. Blood rush for more crit chance, and then gladiator might. Lots of crit, basically. You probably don't need a demonstration, but I'll, I'll just show it real quick. Good for infested survival. You know, the ones with the more resources, right? Alright, let me find a good room for this. Pretty simple, just put the dome down, wait for stuff to go in, and then whip. I'm using specifically the jaw sword because I have a good ribbon mod for it, so, you know, it's a no-brainer to do more damage. Yeah, on this tile set, I like this corner, because the enemies just funnel in from you know, over there, and then over there. Okay, Gooner, shit. You know, she's the fucking BDSM whip lady. Crazy cat lady. Hot fucking crazy cat lady. You know, she has- yeah, I'd goon to her, you know. She got big boobies, you know, wide hips, mother-bearing hips, as a certain Newgrounds animator would say. I'm getting a lot of Oricon cells. I have two, but whatever. This build also benefits from having Rolling guard for poison, because you're going to be using this mostly in those infested survival missions where poison is a pretty big danger. Oh yeah, you ensnare the ancients as well, so they don't steal your energy. Oh, that's so good. I didn't realize that, how much of a benefit that was. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, I'm getting a lot of Oricon cells. Just, like, it's only been five minutes. Oh yeah, my one friend showed me this, that you can ensnare acolytes, which is very useful. Yeah, see? There's no fucking risk of him killing me. Yeah, you just get a lot of resources. It's very useful. Anyway, that's enough of this character. Very useful, very easy farm frame. A fucking BDSM cat lady. You know, she has nice physical features. Wide hips and uh, big boobies. If she was real and she wanted to date me, I'd let her tie me up, sure. Dude, I don't even want to fuck these characters, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I don't get horny when I play this game. I'm just saying this bullshit because how good are they as waifus, haha? <laughs> That's part of the shtick, I guess. Alright, we got a nostalgic character next. Valkyr. So I actually have two builds. One is a uh, pretty standard high efficiency to have the claws last a long time. The other one is pretty reliant on a companion with a uh, Dariga as a primer, Art Coil, and Synth Deconstruct. So you have basically infinite energy. Even though the companion build is a lot better damage wise, I still prefer the no companion one, even though the damage isn't that great. Actually, this might be a good way to showcase some of the problems I have. The no companion one is a lot more reliable because the energy energy drains a lot slower, so it's easier to refresh your energy while you have the claws out. Yeah, also there's the problem of Dariga dying, so you can't have your primer and uh, 
which equals more energy, right? It's honestly kind of hard to keep companions from dying. Uh, Valkyrie's really gonna circuit because of the decrees. There's a lot of melee decrees in circuit, so going really far equals more damage, which is good for the higher levels in circuit. Okay, the Drea is not dying very fast. Maybe it's because I'm moving. In something like Exterminate, this wouldn't be really good because the enemies can be a little bit more sparse, but I mean, this is working in this pretty well. I'm sure if I played like a Netracell or something, this would be really good. Yeah, the problem with this build is you have no enemies around you. That means no energy, so. And when you have no energy, when there's enemies around, when you eventually find enemies, but you have no energy, it's like, oh, you die, you get two shot. I feel like Baruch is just more reliable if you want to play melee because he has insane damage resistance. It's not invincibility, but you're practically invincible with uh, the daggers with their insanely high damage resistance. You don't need a companion, and you don't need a lot of energy with Baruch, since Desert Storm doesn't use energy. If I want to use Exalted Melee, I just use Baruch. <laughs> this doesn't really quite cut it. Hey, I forgot I could use Warcry to swing a lot faster as well. Fun fact about Valkyr, she was my first main when I got into the game. One of the first frames I farmed. It's very nostalgic because this is the character I played when, when I was still really excited about the game, you know. I was in awe exploring all the shit in this game. I had a blast playing the game while playing as her with my one friend. I remember I, I remember back in the day when I was first playing this game in 2017, the energy economy was so shit. I would use Hysteria only to revive my friends. We were so ass at the game that even in lower level stuff, we would just die a lot. I would use it because, oh, you're invisible and you can revive your friends. I don't think I had the operator unlocked yet. You know, I had good times with her, but she was kind of abusive. You know, she has a lot of anger issues. She was abused in another relationship, but that doesn't give her the excuse to lash out on me. I even paid for her therapy with platinum, and she was still a fucking bitch to me. Regardless of how poorly the last relationship ended, I'm still grateful for the times I've had with Valkyr. Now I'm just gay for Baruch because he's a much better melee frame. Alright, Citrine. Citrine is very good in basically every defensive mission type. Mobile defense, interception, defense, whatever. You mostly rely on three mods. Archon continuity because the crystal does toxin damage, so you also do corrosive, and with two green Archon shards, that's full armor strip. Equilibrium to get more energy from Fractured Blast. It's really good having the crits last longer from Recrystallize because I use Phantasma Prime, which is not a crit weapon. I use this for status, so adding crits back onto the table makes it really good. And with lots of status, having a condition overload melee is also really good. All right, so now in mission, you hit them with your first ability for them to drop a bunch of energy. You have your preserving shell for the damage resistance. I have adaptation, so even more damage resistance. No, Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Yeah, have the crystal down, you know. You kind of have to have the crystals on if you want to stun the enemies frequently. Yeah, this is good on Grenier, this is good on Corpus, it's good on... it gets a lot of things. You have a lot of survival as well, due to crystal armor. One of my go-tos for defensive-oriented missions. I've been seeing that term a lot, but I, I don't really give a sh Like, half of this game is just sitting there and defending stuff anyway. Yeah, having infinite energy plus getting crits on non-crit weapons is so good. Also having armor resistance. I feel like this frame has very few weaknesses. I'm sure I could be killing things faster, but that's about it. Yeah, spamming one makes it so that crystal targets multiple things at once, which is really nice. So you could kill quite a few enemies very fast at once, which is very helpful in defense missions. Yeah, Citrine's pretty good for support too, because if or uh, your teammates have galvanized mods on their weapons, they benefit from, you know, having even more status affecting the enemy since, you know, you're doing base elements, most builds don't do all the base element, even more damage for them, especially if they're using condition overload as well. Also, the crystal heals you, so it's beneficial to your friends. The only thing I have to say about Citrine Gooner wise is that she has rock hard tits and she is a rock hard pussy. As you can see there, she has uh, a little crystal pussy slit there, so make of that what you will.
All right, next is Garuda. Since your Dreadmere bomb has so much scaling that you don't really need that much strength, Kavat's Grace is good because you're gonna be in the air a lot using your abilities, so landing without any lag is really nice. You don't need Blood Altar anymore, so I have Nourish over it, because with Molt Reconstruct, after you use Bloodletting to get your energy back, you can use Nourish to get your health back while retaining most of the energy you get from Bloodletting. And plus you get the benefits of Nourish, which is viral, and more energy. It's good to have a lot of range so your Blood Bomb covers a larger range. And since this build is so good for vaporizing things instantly, I really like this build in Netracells because you could just group the enemies in one spot and then vaporize them. You could basically one-shot everything with Garuda. Yeah, I really like using Garuda and Netracells, so we're gonna do one of those right now. So, like I said, use Bloodletting and then Nourish. So, it's basically infinite energy. <laughs> yeah, you press 1 a lot to build up your Blood Bomb. For Netracells, I try to get it to at least a million before I get to, you know, defending the point or killing things in the point. Oh boy, Lanthorns, it's not like I have a bazillion of those. You have a Dante here, so I can't really show off the defensive options that Garuda has quite well, but whatever. <laughs> so normally, it's really good to use Talons to get your shield back since you get so much invincibility, right? As well as shield gating with Augur mods or whatever, and Brief for Spite to get your shield back. You kind of have to be proactive about it, so I'm glad we have this Dante here. <laughs> so since my Blood Bomb is built up, hopefully I could get a big group of enemies here. Yep, see? One-shotting fucking, what is it, level 250, 300 enemies, something like that. And plus, it, it's really nice trying to group up enemies in the circle here for Netracells. Alright, let's see how much damage this Blood Bomb does. <laughs> what is that, 50 million there? <laughs> Pretty good. A million before charging up is, you know, just to be safe, you know, just so you, you're guaranteed to one-shot. Anyway, uh, Gooner shit. Yeah, she's a fucking cool vampire lady. Gerudo looks like she could be in Bloodborne. I'm kinda not into blood, so that's off limits in bed, I guess. <laughs> nice, wide hips, mother bearing hips, which is very nice. Dude, why am I seeing all this Gooner shit? Like, I'm literally only saying it for the fucking video. <laughs> like, do I actually want to fuck Gerudo? No. Do they even have pussies? These are flesh mechs. Like in fucking Attack on Titan. Are they are they breedable? Well, I guess Jade is breedable. Like she had a child with fucking the stalker. But yeah, Grid is cool. You know, she has fucking giant claws, which are pretty cool since if you don't equip a melee weapon, you get the claws and you can mod them. It's not really an exalted weapon, but you know, it's still cool. It's no Valkyr claws, but mine aren't modded very well, but I'm sure you can mod them so that they're pretty good. Alright, a cool thing I didn't mention is that if you get them under 40% health and you kill the enemy with the Dread Mirror, instantly kills them if they're under 40% and it, it charges the Blood Bomb even more. So that's really useful to have. That's a useful thing to know to get more damage faster. Okay, the last frame we're going to be talking about today is Neja. You know, it is called Waifu Frame, but... We can have some uh, femboy husbandos in here. So here's my build. I remember my friend who gave me that Korra build mentioned, oh, Breach Surge is really good. So I found a build online using Breach Surge. Don't remember where it's from, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Equilibrium is so good, right? You get more energy from the Chakram. Adaptation is really good with Warding Halo because even more damage resistance on top of the Halo is insane. You never die as Neja. And Breach Surge is really good with melee, so I have this Orthos Prime. I don't know why I have melee vortex. <laughs> yeah, Blood Rush with uh, Naramon Lens for longer combo duration. I have Breach Surge over Firewalker because Firewalker's main benefits are literally just a small amount of fire damage and you're more slippery. So Natcha is already very slippery and fire damage isn't that much. So, you know, it's the least useful out of its four abilities. So Breach Surge is very useful in in this build since you know melee is ridiculous so breach surge multiplies damage on an enemy to the next enemy having an insanely powerful melee that you can use with Nesha because you have lots of damage resistance so you can get closer to the enemies you could do insane amounts of damage 
He's good against everything because ridiculous and massive damage kind of negates armor. Also, um, warding halo makes it so that poison doesn't kill you. So he's basically good in every kind of mission. And I'll show you how the build works right here. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. People are like, oh, use ciphers on these. Like, the puzzle really isn't that hard. You can do it pretty fast. Basically, at this point, you just spam one and two. <laughs> One for the Breach Surge and massive damage, and then two to get your energy back. It's pretty simple. Yeah, the Fell Arcs also works pretty well with Breach Surge, since the Fell Arcs, you could get really high damage numbers with that. Yeah, see a million damage from the melee from the Breach Surge. Pretty crazy stuff. If I get terminology wrong, by the way, like if you understand what I'm saying, then it's fine. Oh yeah, Nautilus is good for gripping enemies into the Breach Surge. That's a pretty useful part of the build as well. A million damage in, in a hit is pretty crazy, but I've seen like a hundred million in a hit using Breach Surge is actually ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, 53 million there. <laughs> yeah, Breach Surge is really strong. And plus you can get close to the enemies because, oh, you got a warning halo. And you get to keep the combo. You know, you're doing nothing because of Neramon. Yep, there's the Necromite. <laughs> Normally those can be really hard to find, but not in that case. Yeah, Nedja you could use in basically any mission type, right? Because you have high re damage resistance, so poison won't bother you. You do insane amounts of damage, so you don't need armor stripping. You could defend points pretty easily with Divine Spears. Breach Surge is so strong that you vaporize basically all enemies, so defending stuff isn't too bad. Honestly, like, Nedja could be decent in spy missions. You could probably use Chakram to go through, like, laser doors. He's just very good all around. Okay, so Gooner shit is like, looking at Neja. now I know I'm just not into traps, okay? Like, I don't consider him very twink-like. He seems, like, build is pretty average. I don't really think of him as that feminine, either. Maybe there's some Journey to the West trap lore that I'm missing out on, but I don't think he's very twink-like and not very boy pussy breedable in my eyes. You know, I, I did say that I would get BDSM by Korra earlier, but not that much weirder than fucking being into this very average looking male. <laughs> 33 mil. Alright, we're done with this mission, and yeah, I guess it's time to wrap up the video. Yeah, that's all the Gooner material that I wanted to talk about today. There's a few frames that I haven't tried yet, but I think might be cool to play. They got her kit seems really weird, but also really cool, so I want to try that out. I have Komei from the new update, and it seems really fun to, you know, gamble with her. I'd love to eventually get Ember Prime, so I could use the Air Loom skin for uh, gameplay reasons. She hasn't been in the Prime Resurgence yet, so I want to farm her instead of buying her. But, so I have to wait for the <laughs> resurgence. Honestly, Warframe is such a good game because it actually is a true free-to-play game. Got all my platinum from trading Veiled Ribbons and selling Arcanes from the Zaraman. And I use that to actually grow my inventory for weapons and Warframes. And sometimes cosmetics. I very <laughs> rarely spend platinum on cosmetics. I have to really like the cosmetic to buy it with platinum. Also, all the story content is free in basically every other RPG, you know, like Destiny or World of Warcraft or whatever, you have to pay for expansions for more content. All the missions are free in this game, which is really cool. You just have to go through quests. I love how much the devs communicate with the community in this game. They do so many streams, and they're very willing to answer questions. I mean, sure, a lot of the time people don't agree with the changes that they make, but I've never really had an issue. And I really respect them for being transparent even if, you know, they're getting negative feedback. I really love their drive to be involved with the community of their game. I feel like so many game devs are so out of touch, and they just make these highly polished videos where they just talk at you rather than talking to the community directly. Like, this studio, it seems so much more down-to-earth having your devs sit down in a live stream and talk to viewers directly through their chat. Also, their forums are pretty active as well. 
I just think it's a cool game with a cool community. I joined a random clan and there's some really cool people in there. This is easily one of the best free to play games out there and I highly suggest checking it out. So much fucking content in this game that you're gonna spend hundreds of hours and it's a really good experience. I had a lot of fun, I don't really regret my time playing this game even though I don't play it as much as I used to. Maybe I'll stream this game occasionally if I feel like I haven't streamed in a while and I want to stream. It's pretty automatic, so I could, you know, talk to a chat while I play this. I have at least one more video that I want to get out by the end of October. I have all the research done for it already. Maybe I could squeeze in one more video after that, but I kind of doubt it. But uh, yeah, yeah, Warframe is a cool game and I'm going to talk about anime more later. See ya.